LCD displays don't use the light in the room and they don't brighten themselves in the crystals themselves. We actually have lights behind the display that is sending a light through that and that light is coming through the polarized views and coming out through those different pixels. The, there are different ways to light the back of an LCD screen. These days we're doing most of that with LEDs, but in some cases older technologies use fluorescence to be able to send that out. The brightness itself becomes pretty important, especially on laptop computers because you're going from place to place. You need it to be crisp and clear and you need to be able to read it well. You'll see the candela per square meter, CD slash M2 as one of those brightness settings. And the better, the, the more is better. The higher number here is a better and brighter screen. Contrast ratios is important too. As we've seen, the LEDs are, or the LCD monitors have a, a view where it's either on or it's off. And when it's off, if a little bit of light leaks through that, it's not as black as it really can be. So you have this, uh, this specification of a contrast ratio. The larger the ratio between black and white, the better the screen is going to look. We see this a lot with plasma displays and some of the newer L LCD displays that you might have for a television, where contrast ratio really, really important on a television. Not as important when you're working on a desktop environment, but if you're doing a lot of video or you're working a lot with photography and doing editing of pictures, this becomes really, really important, maybe even more so than a television. The larger the ratio, the better for that contrast ratio. The viewing angle, you know, wherever you are, if you move left and you move right and you're looking at your screen, there's a certain angle because those, those uh, LCD screens have all of that pointing out directly at you. At a certain point, it's going to be hard to see that anymore. In fact, the screen looks a little bit odd when you're looking at it outside that angle. Um, so you want to look to see if other people are going to be using this at the same time. You'll have this in a room, in a meeting room, for instance. You want to be sure you have a nice wide viewing angle so that everybody can see it. There are also a number of ports on the back of these monitors that allow you with different connectivity. There are VGA connections. There's DVI. There's HDMI. Not all LCD monitors have all of those connections on the back of them. So you want to be sure that you have the same type of connector coming out of your computer as going into your LCD monitor. And maybe you also want to plan to plug some other things into your monitor as well. Make sure you've got enough of those types of connections available to you. LCD projectors are becoming much more popular. You're seeing them in almost every large meeting room, every conference room you'll go into. They're getting much smaller these days. They're becoming very, very portable. And whenever you're plugging into your computer to these, we always talk about these as being your LCD projectors. We're almost commonly talking about that because that was one of the first technologies used for these types of projectors. They don't always use a liquid crystal display anymore. They are very different technologies inside of these LCD projectors, but we're, we sort of call them that generic name. And at least in the meantime, that's how you'll hear them referred to. They have a very, very bright light in there because they have to send that very small amount of information out over a very large area, out and make it a very wide and large picture on the screen. This could be 10 feet across. It needs a lot of light to be able to do that. So it gets very, very hot. You never just want to turn off one of these things. You need to let it cool down. There's usually a button on the top or on the side where you can tell it simply turn the bulb off and the fan inside of the device continues to run. You never want to just completely unplug this and be able to leave the room with it. Otherwise, your bulb will cool down a little bit too fast and it may crack, it may break. And those bulbs are pretty expensive. They're hundreds of dollars to replace the bulbs inside of these devices. So always let them cool down whenever you're planning to use these and you should be just fine. We saw a number of ports in our interfaces video, but I thought it'd be worth going through these for our video module here, where we've got analog ports and we've got other digital and analog ports. The most common analog port you'll run into for video is a VGA port, and those are generally a DE15 port. The DE stands for the size of this case that goes around the port itself, and the 15 refers to the number of pins that are inside that video port. For digital type connections, we generally will run a DVI, which is a digital visual interface, or an HDMI, which is a high definition multimedia interface. The DVI has many, many different kinds of connections. You can run a D, a DVI-D, which is a digital, uh, a DVI uh, a, which is an analog, or you have the DVI-I, which is integrated, which could be either digital or analog. That's a very, very functional interface and how it works. 
For our other technologies, HDMI, a much simplified type of video interface, it can also send audio through it. That HDMI we're seeing more and more on portable devices and computers themselves. And the HDMI has this smaller port associated with it. So if you're ever plugging into an LCD monitor, it's probably going to have one, two, or perhaps all of these on that monitor. And you'll be able to plug in almost anything you'd like. Let's see what we've learned about display devices. Our first question is, why is the native resolution of an LCD monitor important? As I mentioned earlier, if you're buying a new monitor, you want to be sure the native resolution of the monitor matches what you're planning to use from your computer. And that's because that's going to determine the clearest and the crispest view that you're going to have on your screen. Another question, which of these LCD monitor contrast ratios is better, 1 to 1,000 or 1 to 5,000? If you recall, our contrast ratio was the contrast between white and black in our LCD monitor, and more is better. So that means that 1 to 5,000 is a better contrast ratio than the 1 to 1,000. And our last question, which video outputs can provide digital signals? Our answer to that is both DVI and HDMI. You'll notice that our VGA is only an analog signal. We can't do digital signals out of our VGA port, or generally, we certainly don't find that. For display devices, we now know everything we need to know. Our 22701 Essentials Exam, Section 1.7, we've gone through CRTs and LCDs and projectors and the different port types and what you can expect to see when you're trying to buy a brand new LCD monitor and some of the specifications you should be interested in. If you'd like to see any of our other free a videos, if you'd like to participate in our message boards or send me a message yourself, you can go to our website, freeaplus.com.